Let's look at the pectoralis minor on the right side. We have our client, Justin, seated here facing the camera, so we have an anterior view. The pectoralis minor attaches distally, or we could say superiorly, to the coracoid process of the scapula here. And there are three slips. Uh, the muscle runs inferiorly and a bit medially to attach to the third, fourth, and fifth ribs. That's its typical attachment pattern. Sometimes it will attach to two to four, ribs two to four instead, occasionally to ribs two to five, but usually it's ribs three to five. Because the muscle attaches to the scapula and from there the other attachment onto the rib cage is more anterior, the pectoralis minor can protract the scapula, the shoulder girdle, at the joints of the shoulder girdle, that would be the scapula relative to the thoracic body wall rib cage. We can call that the scapulocostal or scapulothoracic joint. And of course, the clavicle as part of the shoulder girdle would also protract with the scapula. And that would happen at the sternoclavicular joint over here. Justin, can you show us a movement of your shoulder girdle directly anteriorly? There we go. There is protraction of the scapula shoulder girdle. Now, because the other attachment, the rib cage attachment of the pectoralis minor is more inferior, the pectoralis minor can move the scapula shoulder girdle down into depression. So can you bring your shoulder girdle straight downward? There we go, and back up. Now, there is a third joint action that the pectoralis minor can create, and that is what is known as downward rotation of the scapula. And we cannot isolate downward rotation of the scapula with the client to show you. The only way that downward rotation of the scapula can occur is as a coupled movement with the arm, the humerus at the shoulder glenohumeral joint. A concept known as scapular humeral rhythm where there's a coupling of uh, humerus and scapular motions. And for that matter, clavicle would couple in also. And downward rotation is a motion of the scapula that always occurs when the humerus either moves into extension in the sagittal plane or add a deduction in the frontal plane. So if we look at the skeleton for just a moment, here is a posterior view and this is the right scapula. Downward rotation is a movement like this where the glenoid fossa out here orients downwardly. So there is downward rotation of the scapula. Now, what we can say is there's one line of pull of the pectoralis minor. So really it only creates one motion pattern, an oblique plane motion pattern we could say. And that would be a combination of the forward protraction, the depression downward, and of course the downward rotation as well. Uh, we won't worry about trying to couple in that downward rotation to show you, but we can have Justin show you the motion pattern of the protraction and depression together. So Justin, can you show your shoulder girdle moving both forward and down together? There we go, and come on back up. Okay, now the other attachment, as we've said, is onto the rib cage, usually ribs three, four, five. And that means that if it attaches onto the rib cage, it can move the rib cage. It can move ribs three, four, five relative to the rib joints, the joints in front, the joints in back for the rib cage. And the other attachment, now the other one being on the scapula, is higher up. So that means that the pectoralis minor can elevate ribs three through five, or it can elevate the rib cage. And elevation of the rib cage is something that occurs whenever we take a breath in. So Justin, can you take a nice deep breath in? Go ahead now. And there we go. And we can even see his rib cage lifting up that way and you can relax and breathe comfortably. So there we have the pectoralis minor on the right hand side.